iPhone 8 leak reveals a nasty new surprise. Apple is iPhone 8 is going to get a lot right. My exclusive images confirm a dramatic upgrade, its biggest changes combine cutting edge with overdue catch-ups and it feels great in hand. But my time with the late stage prototype has also confirmed one infuriating design flaw. Great secret features and nasty surprises are my regular columns investigating the latest hardware and software for the best features slash biggest problems hidden behind the headlines. For all its inevitable photographic improvements, Apple's new vertically aligned dual rear camera causes physical problems. It'll break them down. One shake, rattle and roll. In a nutshell, the iPhone 8 is a pain to use on a flat surface. Why? Because the protrusion of the new rear cameras is not only bigger this year, it also extends further down the phone. This means on a flat surface the iPhone 8 rocks, rolls and rattles a lot more than even the iPhone 7 Plus whose horizontal rear cameras provide more stability. I also find the increased angle the iPhone 8 lies at when flat to be inconvenient, though I'm sure others will cope just fine. That said you're going to want to pick up the iPhone 8 to use comfortably more than previous iPhones, so it wouldn't have been the worst compromise if Apple had built Touch ID into the back rather than ditching it altogether. To wear, tear and contact area. The other issue the iPhone 8 seconds new vertical cameras create is one of contact. Firstly the enlarged cameras lift the whole back of the phone off a flat surface so every impact when putting the iPhone 8 down is to the camera's rim and opposite corner of the phone the two pivot points which cause the phone to rock. With Apple switching to a glass chassis this may protect the back, but there are two clear contact points which will surely scuff and scratch over time. Secondly don't put the iPhone 8 on a slippy surface. Again these two minimal contact points may be a few millimeters square in total mean this smartphone is going to slip and slide all over the place. The Nexus 4 was a similarly suicidal phone so be very careful where you put the iPhone 8 down. The case problem. Of course I know what the main counterpoint to all this is just put a case on it. Well yes and no. Firstly buying a case should be a choice and not something to simply make a phone usable slash safe on a flat surface, and secondly iPhone 8 cases will need to be substantially thicker to both level out the smartphone and still provide enough protection for the camera's rim. The iPhone 8 is a stunning looking phone but I doubt many owners will get to see it much. The sensible solution. Ultimately the more sensible solution should come from Apple. It should either double down its efforts to create a flush camera like produced with iPhones 1-5 or fill out the rest of the smartphone with the larger battery to hide the bump. Two birds, one stone. Personally I've been arguing for the latter for many years, but with the iPhone 8 set to be the most expensive iPhone in history and a rare find at launch maybe Apple will label its increased camera protrusion as a feature. After all it will remind you this prized device needs a case every time you put it down. Thank you for watching. For the follow up, subscribe to the channel yourself here. With a glass back. Looks to me like the iPhone 7s will finally unlock the magical power of wireless charging for the iPhone generation, sabotaging a potentially unique marketing point of the iPhone 8. More details from the latest leaks here on Forbes. Forget the iPhone 7s or iPhone 8, something else comes this way. And then there's the question of the name. The internet has seemingly settled on iPhone 7s, iPhone 7s Plus, and iPhone 8 Dash, or at least those are the terms you need to search for to find any news. That doesn't mean Apple will stick with those names. There's more than enough evidence from previous launches that Tim Cook has something else in mind. With all the talk of the iPhone 8 online, it's unlikely that even Apple's ivory tower view of the media would release three handsets with numbers lower than eight. Which means you have a basic model, a plus-sized phablet, and a highly specified and insanely expensive model. Apple already has a pattern for this, so let's reconfigure the lineup around the hip new labels and fit in with the numbering scheme to offer us the iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone 8 Pro. Except Tim Cook apparently has arithmophobia, so let's drop the 8 bomb and regenerate the lineup in the 10th anniversary of the first Apple smartphone. iPhone. 
iPhone Plus, iPhone Pro. Some justification on the new naming conventions here. Can Apple really live without Touch ID? Touch ID, the biometric fingerprint scanner on the iPhone range devices, looks set to be missing from the iPhone 8. Thanks to the removal of the home button, Touch ID would have needed a new home in any case. Options such as embedding it in the power button or using the Apple logo on the rear chassis have been mentioned, but these are being ignored. Tim Cook is going to gamble on losing Touch ID altogether and rely on facial recognition. As leaked in its own software, Apple will instead move all iPhone 8 security to Face ID, a new facial recognition that will hopefully work better than Samsung's erratic implementation in the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S8 Plus which struggles in bright sunlight, low light and when wearing glasses slash sunglasses. But Samsung played it safer than Apple, because both the Galaxy S8 and Galaxy S8 Plus still retain their fingerprint sensors as a fallback. They are idiotically positioned, but they were still my default method of unlock within a week of using each phone. More here on Forbes. Improving your portrait. Lurking inside the latest iOS 11 beta releases new code for Apple's portrait mode. This is the dual camera powered bokeh effect where the subject is in sharp focus while the background goes out of focus. Apple has refreshed the settings, but also stores data of the original image capture so you can remove the effect for a clean portrait at a later time. Mike Weatherly has more. Portrait mode not only has exited its beta status, but has seen some improvements as well. The procedure to take the shot is unmodified, but the edit feature now allows for the effect to be removed at will and non-destructively. The effect still can't be applied retroactively if the image wasn't taken in portrait mode to begin with. All the details are at Apple Insider. Calling Dick Tracy, Apple Style. For a companion device, a lot of people want the Apple Watch to operate independently from the host iPhone or iPad. Apple more than likely has the technology to do so inside Cupertino's labs, but is it ready for the public? Bloomberg's Mark Gurman believes so. Currently, Apple requires its smartwatch to be connected wirelessly to an iPhone to stream music, download directions and maps, and send messages while on the go. Equipped with LTE chips, at least some new Apple Watch models, planned for release by the end of the year, will be able to conduct many tasks without an iPhone in range, the people said. For example, a user would be able to download new songs and use apps and leave their smartphone at home. More on the unconnected Apple Watch potential here. Go large an option for new MacBook Pro. As it stands, the MacBook Pro machines top out at 2TB of storage, provided by a pair of 1TB Vinan package. Now that the South Korean company has been able to increase the size of these chips, Apple will have the option to ship a Mac machine with a whopping 4TB of storage in the near future. Samsung announced a 1TB Vinan chip that it expects to be available next year. Initially mentioned in 2013, during unveiling of the industry's first third mint, Samsung has been working to enable its core memory technologies to realize one terabit of capacity on a single chip using a Venon structure. The arrival of a 1TB Venon chip next year will enable 2TB of memory in a single Venon package. More at Samsung, and the tip of the hat to Ben Lovejoy. And finally, following the lukewarm reception to Planet of the Apps, Apple's second original series has debuted and the reaction has not improved by much. Carpool Carao takes the short format sketch from the Late Late Show, puts it over to Apple's distribution system and increases the runtime. Has it worked? Rebecca Nicholson reviews the show. Apple has supersized his formula but, in doing so, has managed to misunderstand entirely what it is that made it charming. Judging by the first episode and what's teased later in the series, this is less about getting a revealing interview out of someone who may otherwise seem distant, and more about bowing down to the power of celebrity. Will Smith, who stars in the first episode, isn't there to have a conversation with Corden. Who's there to perform? The full review is at The Guardian. Apple Loop brings you 7 days worth of highlights every weekend here on Forbes. Don't forget to follow me so you don't miss any coverage in the future. Last week's Apple Loop can be read here, or this week's edition of Loop's sister column, Android Circuit, is also available on Forbes. Thank you for watching. For the follow-up, subscribe to the channel yourself here.